Hey folks, it's a beautiful evening here in uh, Massachusetts tonight. It's Tuesday, July 21st. Let's see, the Congress came back and had their first full day um, talking about some more stimulus package stuff and they haven't mentioned extending unemployment, but I guess the, the Democrats wanted to spend three trillion dollars in the HEROES Act and the Republicans knocked it down to one trillion. So I think there's still work to be done. Um, it's still an awful lot of money and uh, there's still an awful lot of people who are going to lose their jobs in the next coming weeks or coming months. Um, I guess Boeing has been hit really hard. They're parking their planes. Um, no one's buying them. Delta and United Airlines say that come October 1st, you know, they're going to have to lay off thousands of people all around the country. This can't be good for the economy. Um, with the Rona things going around down in uh, the southern belt there, it's just going to get worse. I mean, people aren't traveling. Now Bahamas just is banning Americans from coming. Um, at first they had offered incentives for Americans to come and work down there and now they're saying no 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 Americans stay away um, I guess their rates are going really high but until this is under control somewhat um, oh, the economy is not looking too good so with airlines uh, laying people off and Boeing ha having a surplus of all their planes and nobody buying them it doesn't look good for the travel industry and tourism I was reading an article the other day about St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City I mean they rely on tourists who come and visit and who you know leave um, donations in the box I mean that's how they survive and without those donations they can't survive I mean Manhattan is still a ghost town you look at Broadway and loads of these production companies are filing for bankruptcy. I mean, they just can't, they can't survive. And, and it's fine now, there's outdoor dining and for those who do venture out to go, and, and I tell you, in Massachusetts, there's not that many people going out to eat. The, um, if they do sit outside, you can do it on a beautiful night like today, it, it's July. But what happens come October or November? I don't know how these restaurants and small businesses can survive. It's funny, in my, in my small town here in Massachusetts, they, uh, they have a proposal to build a new super um, one, one stop shop, I guess you could say, for the police and the firemen. And of course, there would have to be a proposition for increased taxes but they just built a brand new library and they just built a brand new high school and and people just can't afford to live here anymore so you just think of what the real estate tax is going to do with the deficits that these small towns are running on and then you got people drinking the kool-aid here who think that they can actually you know build another 50 million dollar building on taxpayers you know backs and then it's just not going to work you know they're not going to vote it i mean retired people they live on a fixed income and and they get their social security checks and they're going to be driven out of this this town i mean and you have this going on all across the united states and i don't understand you know I, I, some people just have no idea of what's going on in, in the world I know I talked to my friends in Tanzania. <clears throat> As you know, I have founded a school there. And and he's telling me that the price of rice, which was normally 2200 shillings, which is about a dollar a kilo, is now selling for 1500 shillings a kilo, and in some parts of the country where they grow it, it's selling for 900 shillings a kilo. So you get like 45 cents a kilo. It's unbelievable because there's no demand for it and there's no exports right now. So it's not just in America, but it's going to happen here too when demand is low. It's, uh, 
Yeah, it's not good. Uh, and people, uh, and they're going to lose their capital, their investment, and they're going to be unable to, you know, cultivate and have another season um, with the abundance that's going on. Again, I was reading another article, you know, all these retailers uh, are going uh, bankrupt. You know, they're filing bankruptcies, but before they do so, they're giving these golden parachutes to all the executives, which is absolutely crazy. I mean, how can, you know, the people at the top be making these million dollar deals when people are suffering at the bottom? It just makes no sense. Years ago, there was profit sharing and employees, you know, benefited from the profits in a company. And today it's all corporate greed and the 1% and the people at the top getting all the money. And I don't, I can't fathom, you know, I mean, we elected these politicians in over the years that changed everything so drastically. United States really has a zero net worth these days. And, and the people have a zero net worth. Is, is this the American dream? Is this why people want to come here? I mean, you have riots in, you know, and anarchists and, and you know, causing problems and, and wanting to defund the police. This is all part of the social, you know, inequities of the country. I mean, if it can happen there, it can happen anywhere. And, and just look at what's happening in our country. You look at some of these cities and, and it's bigger than the mayors and it's bigger even than the governors. It's just out of control. And yes, you have peaceful protesters and you have people who want change, but now it's time to, you know, start writing legislation and get some of those rules enacted. But to burn buildings down and, you know, it's, it's not the protesters that are doing that. It's, it's bigger than that. And it's scary. I don't think these social problems are going away and I don't think they're going to end very well and there's a lot of stuff going on right so between bankruptcies I just heard too in our town that there are 48 foreclosures going on already I mean our town has about 27,000 people in it um, 48 foreclosures and it's only July there's all these rent forbearances or, or mortgage forbearances and rents being put on hold um, but again the rent the people who, who are paying rent they have to pay it back like like soon like it's not put on 30 years later like a mortgage right so people who have a mortgage they can go into forbearance and add this time onto the back end of their their mortgage so they don't have to pay it back now but the people who pay rent so even though people are you know putting their mortgages on forbearance they don't have to pay their mortgage companies or their banks right now but people who have to pay rent they still have to pay rent whether the landlords are paying their mortgages or not the system is all out of whack I was even listening to another youtuber and he was saying that even if you're working, and even if you can pay your mortgage, put it on forbearance. And you don't have to worry about it now. Like having the cash and having the money right now is more important than paying your mortgage, like pay it later. I guess that's just another way of just adding to your debt and just keep adding and adding and adding, which makes no sense. I don't understand why people wouldn't just pay their bills and and just own their assets outright. I don't know. I also think a lot of homeowners might, you know, especially landlords who have investment properties that they rent if their, you know, tenants aren't paying and the federal government put a tax <coughs> A waiver on capital gains tax so if they made any profits on that house they wouldn't have to pay tax on it um, at the moment 
So there might be a lot of landlords who say, you know, the hell with this, I'm going to just sell this property. I can't get tenants or they're not paying. I could make $30,000, you know, by wiping away my taxes, my capital gains tax on this property. So why not just do it? Anyway, as of today, the federal deficit is at $24.22 trillion. And how on God's earth is that ever going to be paid back? I don't know. Tax rebates, cutting taxes, tax breaks for everybody, nobody's paying taxes. I mean, how do you run a country with, with all this, you know, garbage going on? Tax breaks here and tax breaks there. I don't know. I'm willing to pay my tax. I'm willing to give it to, you know, help fund, you know, even health care. But how in the world do you recover from this? Also, do you know that in 2010, the federal minimum wage was $7.25? Do you know what the federal minimum wage is in 2020? It's $7.25. I mean, granted, every state has their own, pretty much. But not every state. Some states do. In Massachusetts, I believe it's like $13.25 an hour now. But you, even Pennsylvania, you go to Philadelphia, you go to Mississippi or Alabama or Oklahoma or Missouri or all these, you know, deep red states, it's $7.25. Now, granted, it might be a little cheaper to live there, but... Who in the world can afford to pay rent or, or heat or fill up their car with gasoline or even buy a car for that matter on $7.25? And it's odd too because a lot of jobs are tied to that amount, even in Massachusetts. So even like, you know, substitute teachers, they were making $75 a day. But you work in 10 hours a, 10 hours a day or eight hours a day you were working. So it, it didn't even meet the $13 minimum wage in Massachusetts. And when people questioned, you know, the town about it, they said, well, it's all based on federal, federal unemployment rate, which is $7 and 25 cents. I, I, I don't know how people are surviving on that. And, and these people that have these $7 and 25 cent jobs are not high school kids anymore you know they're they're working mothers and fathers and people who you know, the frontline workers you know at Walmart or at McDonald's or Dunkin Donuts or the local coffee shop I mean they're getting seven dollars and 25 cents they're risking their lives with this Rona infection going around and uh, I don't know something's so wrong with this country and, and so it's not just us it's every country and I think every country is in equal shambles and it all started you know, in the 1970s you know the dollar used to be tied to the price of gold and now geez the price of gold today is over to almost two thousand dollars like 1950 for an ounce of gold but if you can afford to I would suggest you buy some and hold on to it even silver is over twenty dollars an ounce now these things are going to the moon <clears throat> They're going to be worth a lot of money soon. They're going to be worth a lot more than the dollar is. Anyway, that's it for me today. I hope you have a lovely evening. Um, as I am sitting outside in uh, my backyard. And I look forward to giving you my thoughts tomorrow. Alright, have a good day.